Assalamu alaikum dear students today we are going to discuss about particle size distribution curve in the previous lectures in the soil grain size analysis we studied two different methods to plot the particle size distribution curve using sieve analysis for the coarse grain portion and using hydrometer analysis for the fine grain portion and then we plotted the combined gradation curve for that so today we are going to discuss what's the uses of this particle size distribution curve how we can utilize it to classify a particular soil or to distinguish one particular soil from another soil so let's begin as we discussed last time that you can place the percentage and the size of fine and coarse grain material on particle size distribution curve with particle size on a log scale on x axis and percentage finer on a normal scale on y axis so why we plot this on a log scale because you saw that in case of clay and silts the particle sizes are very very small and in comparison the particle size of sand and gravel are comparatively very large so what log scale does is allow you to plot a very small values and a very large values on the same scale otherwise if you would have plotted this on a normal scale then to give equal weightage 2.001 and 0.002 and then 1 and 2 you will require infinitely long horizontal axis over here so maybe the length of the horizontal axis will be like 1 or 2 km in which you can plot the curve which will not be possible for you to display and use meaningfully so that is why we plot the particle sizes on a log scale and the percentage finer because it's a constant difference so we plot it on a normal scale that's why it is known as semi logarithmic plot okay semi logarithmic means one axis is on log and another axis is on the normal axis so once you have plotted your line for particle size distribution if it is like this then it shows that this region is showing which is 4.75 mm and higher these are the gravel particles then you can see between 4.75 and between 0.75 micron you've got sand and then smaller than that you've got silt and clay so this portion was plotted using the sieve analysis and this portion was plotted using the hydrometer analysis so when we combine them together then it is known as combined gradation plot so moving on as i mentioned that using this you can determine the percentage of particular material and different types of the particle sizes which are present in a given sample one other thing you may have noticed over here that sometimes this line is plotted in this direction and sometimes it is plotted in another direction in other books the reason is that if you <coughs> plot your particle sizes in a descending order then the line will be left to right which you can see over here but if you plot your particle sizes in ascending manner like 0.001 is 0.0001 is here and 100 is here then in that case the line will be from right to left so it doesn't matter you can use the both types 
with that you will get the same result the only thing is that the shape of the s curve will be like this this is also known as s curve so in this case it is called s curve while in this case it is more like a z curve rather than s curve so that is why in some of the books it will be plotted like this the reason is that the particle sizes are in ascending order over here you can see clay is on the left which is smallest gravel is on the right which is the largest but in this case the gravel is on the left which you can see sands in gravel and the clays are on the right so it is just the order of the particle size how you have plotted that the curve remains the same and the purpose of the curve remains the same as well so this curve can be used to determine the gravel silt and clay size particle to classify any particular size so just in case like if i am provided with this uh, combined gradation plot which we discussed in the last class that this portion was plotted using the sieve analysis and this is the portion which he plotted using the hydrometer analysis if you remember the last example problem from our previous lecture hydrometer analysis so in this case you can see that all the different sieve are plotted to sieve sizes are plotted over here as well and the sieve numbers are plotted over here as well so you can take advantage of this as well because sieve number 200 and beyond or 0.075 micron and beyond we have got silts and clay and on this side we have got sand and on this side we have got silts and clays so from this graph you can determine that if you have gravel sand silt and clay in this particular sample and if they are there then how much percentages of each are present now if you remember in our lectures from the beginning that for gravel the particle size is between 76.2 and 4.75 millimeters so anything which is larger than 4.75 millimeter and smaller than 76.2 will be considered as gravel material so let's check how much gravel we have in this soil sample so <clears throat> Over here we can see 4.75, this is 2, 3, 4, 4.75, 4.75 is over here. And we don't have any material over here, 100% of the material are finer than this. So finer means that it will pass through this sea. It means that it is not retained on this sea, so its size is smaller than this particular size or opening or sea. So it means that all the materials is passing to 76.2 cv and 4.75 millimeter cv as well so 100 percent material is passing through both so it means 100 minus 100 so 100 is passing coming into this cv range and passing through this cv range as well so 100 minus 100 so we've got zero percent gravel in this soil then 4.75 and onward the next limit is 0.075 mm which is corresponding to the sieve size of sieve number 200 with 0.075 will be somewhere over here sorry for the line which is not very vertical so 0, 0.0 so between this range now we've got sand okay so over here you can see from this graph you can just project this over here and you see you've got about 38 what uh, from this projection I'm sorry the line is not very very ideal over here so up to 62 percent material is passing over here through sieve number uh, 200 which is 0 0.075 micron sieve I'll have to remove this line erase this one okay and redraw again at the point of C number 200 which is over here okay so C number 200 with this the 62 percent of the material is passing while 100 percent material was coming in 62 percent has passed it means 100 minus 62 so 38 percent material was retained in this range and 62 percent has passed so 100 is come 62 has passed so what is trapped between this range 
100 minus 62 which is 38 so 38 percent is sand and obviously the remaining has passed so 62 has come in and zero uh, is basically going out which is the smallest so because there is nothing beyond the pan so nothing is passing through the pan pan is the small tray which is in the end so 62 minus 0 so 62 percent silt and clay so you've got 38 percent sand and 62 percent silt and clay so it will be either uh, sandy clay or sandy silt type of soil okay so you've got 38 percent sand in this soil and 62 percent silt in this particular material so from this uh, particle size distribution curve you can determine the percentage of a particular type of a soil which are gravel sand silt and clay present in a particular sample so that will be handy when you are classifying the soil in different groups etc the next is the determination of gradation so generally we've got two different classes of a graded material well graded material and poorly graded material so the gradation is basically helpful when you are placing the soil somewhere and compacting it it is also important in determination of permeability of a particular soil as well. In both cases, whether you are using it to compact for a compaction problem or a permeability problem, if all the different sizes of the soil grains are present in a particular soil, it will be known as a well graded material. Well graded material is desirable because when you place this material, the pore spaces between the larger particle will be filled by the smaller particle than that and further pores will be filled by the smaller than that and smaller and smaller and further. So if you have only one size particle, only large size particle, then what will happen is that because you will not have any smaller particle to fill the gap between the whites over here and you will have porous material okay and if you don't have smaller material and all the particles are of larger sizes then you have a lot of gaps in this soil okay and in this case these gaps will have two major disadvantages one is that its density will be less in the, in this case in this soil so you will have less denser material over here okay secondly these pores <laughs> will allow the water to pass through them okay and that will result into a very permeable soil uh, sometimes it is not desirable because it will allow a lot of moisture to pass through its surface uh, and create the drainage problems so usually we require the soil to be well graded which means all the different particle sizes are present in a particular soil mix so over here you can see if the curve is of this shape which you can see over here and this all the different particle sizes have equal representation you can see for any particular range you have got this soil as well and then you've got this soil as well etc you've got this size as well so all the sizes over here you can see this size has got this much range and it's got this much representation in terms of the percentage by weight so well graded material uh, is usually desirable as i mentioned and it basically gives you a very denser mix <clears throat> the other type is a poorly graded soil and poorly graded you either have a gap graded or uniformly graded so uniformly graded is a soil in which a particular size is only present while the other sizes are absent for example this is uniformly graded 
the soil. So here you can see only these sizes are present in this particular soil sample. Okay, 100% material is between here and here for this line. Okay, you can see. So all the different sizes which are outside this range, like you can see these soil sizes and these soil sizes, they are not there. They are absent in this soil sample. So the soil sizes over here, the particle sizes are more or less uniform. They are within the given range. So this is called as uniformly graded soil. Okay, and then we have gap graded soil. So, what is the gap graded soil? Sorry. <coughs> then we have gap graded soil. So, gap graded soil is a soil in which there is a gap and in gradation. Okay, this one you can see. Certain range of particle sizes are absent or very less you can see over here this soil has got very this range of soil particles has got very small percentage over here okay and almost negligible sometimes the curve is really really flat like this which basically means that zero percent for this range okay so this soil have all the different sizes over here like it may have these sizes as well and it may have these sizes in this sample but these particles may not be there okay they may not be there in this soil so there will be gap and gradation so particular sizes will be absent so that's why this soil is known as gap graded now the purpose of course once again as I mentioned earlier is to have denser mix all the time and to have lesser wide space when we are talking about a particular soil suitability for placement for embankment for dams for buildings for retaining walls etc so you want the soil to be always a well graded poorly graded soil which includes gap graded or uniformly graded is usually not desirable so they can be identified using this particle size distribution curve that if the soil is a poorly graded and if it is uh, well graded so moving on how to determine if a particular soil is gap graded poorly graded or in which there be gap graded or uniformly graded or if the soil is a well graded soil so to First is that you can observe as I mentioned on the previous which you can see over here from the shape of the curve you can observe that if soil is poorly or well graded but if you want to calculate it numerically then for that you will require few parameters. <coughs> so the first parameter we are going to discuss is effective size which is known as D10. So what does D10 means? D10 means that the particle size distribution curve corresponding to 10% finer. Where is 10% finer? Here. Okay. So if you draw a line from 10% finer over here, like from here, and then where it crosses the particle size distribution curve, then the particle size from here, this value will be equal to D10. Alright. So over here you can see the D10 seems to be somewhere between uh, 0.5 and 0.1 so maybe 0.15 over here because this is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0.5 so maybe uh, it's around 0.15 millimeter so D10 is 0.15 millimeter so what is the use of D10 is that you can see the 90% material is greater than size over here so it means that the 90% of the material over here is 0.15 millimeter or greater in size. So it basically tells you that what is the soil primarily made of 
so what is the smallest possible size the sizes or the percentage of the soil which is less than 10 percent that usually does not contribute much towards the properties of the soil so this is the point which basically tells you data and tells you that what is the soil really made of if the soil is a coarse grain soil if it is fine grain soil etc so the detail basically tells you that what is soil soil basically primarily made of so 90% of the soil is made up of particle sizes greater than 0.15 mm over here so that will be the 10% material uh, which is smaller that will basically not matter in this case and this effective size is usually uh, a good measure to estimate the hydraulic conductivity or the permeability which is the ability of soil to allow water to pass through its surface you can see sometimes the some of the soils are very permeable the water can easily pass through them and some soils you can see they are not very permeable and they do not allow the water to pass through them easily and they retain the water especially in case of clays you can see they do not give up the water and they do not allow the water to pass through their uh, layer so uh, that we will be discussing in the coming lectures about hydraulic conductivity in detail. So D10 basically uh, is used for that purpose as well besides the classification which we will be discussing in the next slides. Okay. So moving on to the next parameter which is uniformity coefficient which is D60 by D10. So D10 was effective size parameter is effective size and it is called T10. Effective size is equal to T10. The next parameter is uniformity coefficient. It is equal to D60 divided by D10. <clears throat> it uniformity coefficient basically tells you if the, your material is uniform or made up of different sizes. Uniform will of course means that the material is more or less made of same particle sizes of same size. Okay, but if uniformity coefficient value is greater than one, it will basically means that the larger size and the the, uh, the the distance between larger size particle and smaller size particle is more because the size of D60 will be more. <clears throat> so what is D60? Simply, you can plot a line from 60% finer over here and get the size over here. Like in this case, that is somewhere between 0.55 millimeter and D10 once again over here 10% finer material over here than this size so this will be equal to D10 and this will be equal to D60 so D60 divided by D10 that will basically give you uniformity coefficient for example over here it is like 0.55 divided by 0.15 so CU value will be greater than 1 over here which basically means <coughs> that the distance or the, the difference between size of the D60 and D10 is more. On the other hand, if uniformity coefficient is equal to 1, okay, if this is like equal to 1, what it will mean that D60 and D10 is same, which means that your line, your gradation line is something like this, okay. So it, this will be then D10 if your gradation size is like this, and this is like d60 okay so you can see the particle size of d60 and d10 is same okay so if they are same like in this case it is like uh, 0.8 or 0.9 you can see let's say 0 0.8 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.8 so it will be equal to 1 so it means that your particle size distribution curve is a is a vertical line so it's not a curve in this case you can see it does not have all the different sizes these sizes are absent in this and these sizes are absent in this so it's a purely uniformly graded soil made up of only this range of the soil particles okay while all the other soil particle ranges are absent in this case so the more is the value of this uh, uniformity coefficient the more milder will be this curve like this okay and the, the lesser is the value towards the one okay uh, the more vertical the curve will get like at the end of the day it may become vertical okay so uniformity coefficient basically tells you that if the soil has 
यूनिफॉर्म साइल पार्टिकल्स और द पार्टिकल साइज रेंज इज ओवर अ लार्ज साइज सो डी सिक्सटी डिवाइडेड बाई डी टेन सो डी सिक्सटी इज द पार्टिकल साइज फॉर पार्टिकल साइज हैविंग सिक्सटी परसेंट फाइनर एंड डी टेन इज फॉर टेन परसेंट फाइनर ओके करस्पॉन्डिंग टू पार्टिकल साइज करस्पॉन्डिंग टू टेन परसेंट फाइनर another coefficient we have is coefficient of gradation or coefficient of curvature in some books so it is written as cg as well and cc in some books i will write it cc over here so cc or coefficient of curvature is equal to d30 divided by d60 and d10 so d60 d30 and d10 are easy because they are the particle sizes corresponding to 60% finer over here 30% finer over here and 10% finer over here so this is d60 this is d30 and this is d10 why we study that because if your soil is a gap graded material as well you will also have this d60 and d10 value greater than 1 for example for this this is d10 uh, and this is like uh, d60 will be somewhere here so over here you can see for this soil this is d60 and this is d10 and in this case you can see also the uniformity coefficient if you calculate from this it will be like uh, somewhere between 3 divided by 0.15 over here which the value will be greater than 1 okay so the cu value in this case will be greater than 1 which basically means that is not uniformly graded material okay so we cannot call it still the well graded material because there is a gap to so to eliminate that the soil is not uniformly graded you need cu to be greater than 1 but to eliminate that the soil is not also the gap graded you need to eliminate the coefficient of curvature as well okay so coefficient of curvature will tell you that the soil is not gap graded while uniformity coefficient will tell you that if the soil is not or if it is uniformly graded okay so remember i discussed three well graded uniformly graded and gap graded so you need coefficient of curvature to be calculated as well if you want to calculate if the soil is well graded uniformly graded or poorly graded yeah uh, sorry uh, gap graded because gap graded and uniformly graded are two types of the poorly graded soil so cc is equal to d30 square divided by d60 multiplied by d10 so it provides you additional criteria to eliminate or to determine if the soil is gap graded or not while cu tells you if the soil is uniformly graded or not <clears throat> so what criteria will be using for the well graded soil of course visually i can see that if the soil has got all the different particle sizes in a very nicely uniform manner then i can say that the soil is a well graded soil <clears throat> but the criteria provided in the standard is that if your uniformity coefficient is greater than 4 and coefficient of curvature is between 1 and 3 okay so cu is greater than 4 d60 by d10 and cc which is d30 square divided by d60 multiplied by d10 if that value is between 1 and 3 then in that case it will be well graded gravel so for gravel you will have to follow this criteria if you have a gravel soil then you should check that if your cu is greater than 4 and your cc is between 1 and 3 then in that case you can call it a well graded gravel numerically you can calculate the value okay <clears throat> in case of a sand if you have like a sandy soil then for the sand if the uniformity coefficient is greater than 6 instead of 4 there is a value of 6 over here and cc range is same between 1 and 3 then the soil the sandy soil will be a 
well graded sand <coughs> so if any of those condition is not met <coughs> like if you cu is greater than 4 but the value of cc is like greater than 3 if it is like 5 or 6 then the soil will not be a well graded gravel similarly if cu is like less than 4 and cc is between 1 and 3 still it will not be a well graded gravel so both the criteria will have to be met in each case whether it is sand or whether it is gravel you will have to meet the both the criteria if it doesn't meet one criteria then it will be either uniformly graded or a gap graded material <coughs> which we will see that which criteria it's while it's if the value of cu is less than 4 like if it is 2 or 1 and cc is between 1 and 3 it is then uniformly graded soil okay but if cu is greater than 4 and cc is like uh, uh, less than 1 or greater than 3 then it will be a gap graded soil gap graded gravel so similarly you can calculate about sands as well <coughs> so this criteria will be used for determination of if soil is well graded gravel or well graded sand so numerically you can measure that if all the different particle sizes are present in a particular sample whether it is sand or whether it is gravel <coughs> now i'm talking about sandy soil gravel soil you can also determine this from the visual inspection of the curve as well okay this curve is very useful so not only you can calculate those uh, gradations from that if it is well graded or poorly graded soil you can determine the soil type from this as well like if all the soils if the your curve is within the sand range like in this case okay this is the range for the sand which you can see over here 0.075 micron to 4.75 mm so in this range you have got sand so if the whole curve is within this range then your soil is basically a sandy soil because there is no gravel or silt or clay in this soil similarly if the curve is between gravel and sand so in this case you can say gravel sand is soil now it will determine that whether you will have to primarily call it gravel or sand is that 50% material if the 50% material or greater is gravel then it will be sandy gravel but if 50% or more material is sand then it will be gravelly sand the last name in this basically is a parent material just like you put your parent name in the end in case of soil classification as well we say gravel sand gravel gravelly sand means that primarily it is sand and having some gravel so the surname is very important okay that's why in your name you have got surname which basically tells you that primarily from where you are and which to which class you uh, belong to which uh, tribe you belong so it tells your tribe like if something is belonging to sands it will have sand in the end so if i say gravelly sand it means primarily this is sand and it's got some gravel in it okay so the name which comes in the end is the parent type of the material which is the majority constituent of that particular soil so if 50% of the material is like for example in a given soil clay and then the remaining is sand and gravel then it will be sandy clay or gravel clay if the remaining material is gravel or sand okay so similarly if the line is between silt and clay if you plot a gradation curve when it is like this and it is only in the range of silts and clay over here then we will call it silty clay soil okay depending on if the for more than 40% material is 50% material is clay over here so with this gradation curve you you can try different other ranges as well like for example the line is like this then i can call it a silty sand okay if it is because it is within the sand and within the silt as well and more than 50% material is sand over here so it's silty sand okay but if it is like uh, this let's say then this one will be known as sandy silt over here because you can see only very small material is sand and the rest of the material you can see over here this is basically silt in this case so in this case we will call it sandy silt so the position the location of this gradation curve 
on this graph can also tell you from this inspection you can see that that if your soil is a particular type of soil or made up of different uh, mixes of the soil and if it is made up of different mixes then how much percentage it is there in each mix so besides that as i mentioned earlier by looking at the curve you can determine if it is well graded soil or if it is poorly graded soil uniformly graded soil or a gap gap graded soil okay over here you can see the gap in gradation you can see this is a gap in gradation in this case so uh, all the, these different particle sizes they are not present in this case you can see uh, over here the curve is flatter so i can show you the gap graded from here like from here up to here if you project these on this side sorry so almost zero percent of this medicine range is present okay this range is almost zero percent over here okay uh, well, uh, on the other hand you can see if you plot it if you expand the line over here onto a well graded you can see that on well graded in this range you have got all these different percentages available okay it is available in that much percent this particle size so that's why there's a gap in gradation over here and in this case there is no gap but all the different sizes are present having equal contribution to making the soil so visual inspection of the curve can also give you a very handy information so let's discuss a simple example problem to finish it uh, and plot the curve and determine if the soil is a well graded or poorly graded or how we can utilize the data how we can plot it so let's say that if you have went to the lab and over there you are provided with a sandy soil sample so sandy soil sample will be having the size 4.75 millimeter and smaller which is number 4 c and the size will be larger than sieve number 200 which is sieve number 200 so you will arrange the set of sieves according to the gradation or the sieve analysis of sandy soil in the following manner so you will put sieve number 4, sieve number 10, sieve number 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 200 in the end you will place a pan in which you can collect the sample which is passing through sieve number 200 and you will place the soil inside shake it well in sieve shaker and after 10 minutes when the shaking is complete you will take out the soils and uh, measure that how much percent is retained on each sieve how much weight is retained on each sieve in grams like for example if you've taken a particular soil sample and after sieving 40 gram is retained on sieve of all pass through sieve number four so all are smaller than sieve number four so all are sands there is no gravel if there was something retained and it will be considered as gravel 40 percent on sieve number 10 uh, 40 grams on sieve number 10 60 gram on sieve number uh, uh, 60 gram on sieve number 20 then similarly 89 gram on sieve number 40 and so on so this is what you will have from the lab so how to plot the curve from this from the graph so first of all on a first in the first column you will place the sieve size 4 10 20 40 uh, 10 etc i told you that sieve number 4 means there there are four holes per linear inch in this sieve okay so this is how we determine if the sieve number what is the sieve number now its opening size is 4.75 millimeter you know uh, i already give you the table of the opening size of each sieve so from there you can just plot it or you can just go and browse through astm standard it will give you the all sieve opening sizes astm standards are provided to you so over here you can see i will place the opening si uh, size over here which will be also the particle size so opening size in third column um, the data provided was this data was in second column so i have placed it in third column so i've provided the particle size and the grams retained on each C. okay and then the next column cumulative mass retained and percent fine so what is cumulative mass retained cumulative mass retained will be all the mass which is retained above this C. okay so this will be summation of the mass on this sieve and all the sieve above it okay so if you are like in, on fourth number sieve 
so for the mass retain on sieve C number four, and then three sieves above it. If you add them together, that will be the cumulative mass retained on the sieve. Okay, so if the cumulative mass retained, if that is subtracted from the total mass, then that will give you the mass which is passing. Okay, so the mass which is retained above the sieve. If that is subtracted from the total mass, then that will give you the mass which is going to pass the sieve. Okay, so that is why I am using cumulative mass, and then percent final will be equal to the total mass minus cumulative mass divided by the total mass multiplied by hundred. So let me demonstrate how it is going to be calculated. So first of all, first sieve is four point seven five sieve. 0 gram is retained on that so cumulative retained will be 0 and percent final will be 100 percent i'm coming to percent final in a while first let me calculate this so then on sieve number 10 opening size is 2 mm 40 gram material has retained on this sieve so 40 gram plus 0 above this or retained was 0 so 0 plus 40 is equal to 40 so 40 is the cumulative mass retained on this sieve and above it so above was 0 So it is 40. Then coming to the next one, sieve number 20, opening size 0.85. 60 gram was retained on this sieve. So 60 plus the previous one. Okay, this plus 60 will be equal to the cumulative mass retained on sieve number 20 and above it. Okay, so 60 gram on this sieve, and then 20, 40 was above it. Okay. Then coming to the next one, sieve number forty, opening size point four two five, eighty nine gram was retained on this sieve. So the cumulative mass will be eighty nine plus the mass retained on previous sieve, previous sieve. So that will be added to this. So eighty nine plus hundred is one eighty nine. Similarly, sieve number sixty, opening size is point two five, mass retained on this sieve is one forty. So one forty plus mass retained on the sieves above it. Was one eight nine, so one eight nine plus one forty is equal to three twenty nine. And similarly, the next sieve is sieve number eighty, opening size point one eight. So the mass retained on this sieve is one twenty two gram. So one twenty two gram plus all the mass which is retained above these sieves is three twenty nine. So three twenty nine plus one twenty two four fifty one. And similarly, sieve number hundred, opening size point one five millimeter. The mass retained on this sieve. Uh, is measured to be 210 gram, so 210 plus all the mass on the previous is 451, so 451 plus 210 is 661, and then sieve number 200, which is opening size is 0.075 micron uh, millimeter, so the mass retained is 56 gram on this, so 56 plus mass retained on the sieve above it is 661, so 661 plus 56 is the cumulative mass retained on this sieve and above it. And the last one is pan. Pan to the pan. Twelve gram of the material was passed. So twelve plus all the mass which is retained above it. So that will be the total mass which is cumulative retained on the pan and above. And that will be your total mass of the sample as well. Okay, this is the total cumulative mass. So pan plus all the mass when on all the sieves which are top. So if you add the mass on in all the sieves. That will be equal to summation of mass, and also you can determine it by adding all these as well. Okay, if you add all these to check, you will see that this will be the same. So this and this will be the same. So you can determine it from here, or either the last value, the pan plus the cumulative above, will be equal to also the total mass. So once you have cumulative mass, then the percent final will be equal to the total mass minus cumulative retained. So if you Subtract the mass which is retained on a sieve set, okay, from the total mass. Then it will give you the mass which is passing. So the retained is which is on the sieve. The passing which is passing through the sieve. So what we will have over here, we have got the total mass. So how it is calculated? The total mass which is 729 over here, okay, 729. Sorry, writing is not possible on this. Seven twenty nine minus forty. Okay, over here divided by seven twenty nine. That will basically give you this ninety four point five. So if you do this, that will give you this ninety four. Similarly, over here, how you get this? Seven twenty nine minus hundred divided by seven twenty nine, and you will get eighty six point three. 
729 minus 189 divided by 729 that will give you this then similarly 729 minus 329 divided by 729 54.9 759 minus 451 divided by 729 that will give you 38.1 and vice versa and the formula is provided over here okay so you will have 729 minus or the total minus the column 4 okay divided by total mass which is 729 so 729 minus column 4 value divided by 729 multiplied by 100 will give you the percentage final so to plot this then you will have to plot percentage final on the normal axis over here and the y axis you can plot it in excel and the particle size which is column number two over here so you will be plotting column number two and column number five over here okay for the plot you will require these two okay this to be on the x-axis on a log scale okay and this to be on the y-axis on the normal scale okay so once you have plotted this you can see you will have this kind of a graph over here so all the different sizes are plotted you can see over here so now I need uh, to calculate the d10 which is the effective uh, diameter and uniformity coefficient and coefficient of curvature which is sometimes referred to as cc or sometimes cz as well so you can write this cc or cz if you want so now first determine d10 d13 d60 which will be required over here so d10 is over here which is the particle size corresponding to 10 percent final so d10 is here over here so this is the value of d10 which is 0.15 millimeter over here you can see from this scale 0.15 then you have D30 which is to 30% uh, finer so if you come on this graph this is D30 over here which is 0.17 millimeter okay so and then D60 is corresponding to this one which is 60% finer and D60 is equal to this value which is equal to 0.27 millimeter okay so you have got these values so uniformity coefficient is D60 by D10 so it is equal to 1.8 okay and coefficient of curvature is equal to d30 square divided by d60 minus d10 so if you solve this this is 0.71 so if you remember for sandy soil we said that uniformity coefficient cu should be greater than 6 okay and cc coefficient of curvature the value will be between 1 and 3 okay so <clears throat> over here you can see none of this criteria is met the value is obviously uh, less than 6 so this criteria is not met and similarly in case of cc the value is not between 1 and 3 but it is less than 1 so it is also not met so it is a poorly graded sandy soil okay why because it's a sand soil it's 4.75 and down and it is the size is uh, and, and 200 and above okay see number 200 and above so the majority of the soil is within the sand range but it's a poorly graded sand over here you can see it's not a well graded sand so this is how you are going to solve these uh, gradation problems uh, <clears throat> in next class we will be discussing the effect of soil particle shape that if the soil particles are round if they are uh, like uh, 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 angular in shape if they are edgy in shape or they are flaky in shape how they are going to affect uh, the behavior of a particular soil so that will be the topic of the discussion in the next class thank you very much for listening see you next time all the best